Well, hi. Okay, so this is going to be on your morning work. My first problem that I had, we reduced that number from a three digit to a two digit, so it's 82 divided by 6. This is going to be on standard, the standard method of division. So I'm drawing it like this. My dividend is my first number, which is going to go inside because that's the total amount that I have. My 6 is my divisor, and it goes on the outside part. So now I'm going to start off 6. Go, how many groups of 6? Put a multiplication sign here. And I ask myself, how many groups of 6 go into 8? Well, since 8 is larger than 6, I'm going to say that it goes 1 time, because 1 times 6 is 6. Then I'm going to subtract it out. 8 minus 6 is 2. And that's as far as I can go. The goal is, is that this number needs to be less than this or zero. Now I still have some numbers to work with, so I'm going to draw an arrow and bring this down to a 2. How many groups of 6 will then go into 22? Well, I'm coming over here, and I know that 6 times 3 equals 18. And if I had another group of 6, 6 times 4 will then be 24. So the 24 is not going to work. So I'm going to cross that out, and I'm going to go with my 3. So I'm going to put my 3 here, and I know that, again, six times 3 times 6, I already did my math here, is 18. And then I'm going to subtract it out. So I can't take 2. And usually what used to have, what helped me as a kid is I would always put the two the fingers on how many were on the top. So I would put 2, and then I'd ask myself, can I take 8 out of 2? It's like, no. So I need to go to my neighbor and say, hey, i got to borrow some. i got to borrow some stuff, some, um, some value to increase me. So he's like, okay, I'm going to give you a 10. So I bring that over here, and from a 2, it now makes it into a 12. Take that away, and he only has one left. So now I have 12 minus 8, and from there, it's 4 because I know that 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1 minus 1 is 0, so this is what I have left. So this number here is less than my divisor, so this will now be my remainder. Then my answer, this is my quotient. And my answer will be 13 with a remainder of 4. And that's the first problem. Second problem, moving on, 62 divided by 7. And again, my standard division. Now look at this one. I'm going to put my multiplication sign up here. 7 is larger than my 6 and my dividend. So I need to move over. So how many groups of 7 can go into 6? None, because it's too big. So I, And I put that 0 right on top of here so that I know that I need to move to the next place value. So now, how many groups of 7 go into 62? Well, let's look at this. I already know that 7 times 10 equals 70, and that's too big. So what is 7 times 9. Well, if I took an, if I subtracted out a group of 7 out of 70, you're right, it's going to give me 63. 63 is going to be too big because I'm only needing 62. So 7 times 8, again, I'll subtract out another group of 7, and it'll give me 56. So I worked myself down. If working yourself down is complicated, then start with what you know. You know that if you know your fives, which are, you had your, um, your count, skip counting by fives, 7 times 5 equals 35. Add another group of 7 to that 35, makes it at 42. Another group of 7 to the 42, so 42 plus 7 equals 9. So it's 49. 7 times 8 equals 56. And this is where I've got my 56. 
I was like, oh, I'm getting closer. And now I have 7 times 9 equals, I'm adding another group of 7 to my 56, which would be 63. Then I realize that that's too big. And I'm needing to have 56. So in order to get from 56, I need multiplied 8 times 7. And now I'm going to subtract out. That's a standard routine. Find my multiples. I'm going to uh, multiply, subtract, and then repeat again. Uh, bring down and repeat. So now, again, I only have 2 for my top number. I'm going to hold 2. Can I take 6 out of 2? No way. I'm going to borrow from my neighbor. That 6 now becomes a 5 because I'm going to borrow a group of 10. So my 12 now becomes a, uh, uh, my 2 now becomes a 12. So 12 minus 6 equals 6. 5 minus 5 is 0. And so now my 6 becomes my remainder. And my answer now is 8 with a remainder of 6. Okay, now let's take the third problem. And this time I said let's go ahead and extend it to a 3 digit, but our divisor is still only 1 digit. So I have 736 divided by 4. Still with standard algorithm. Put my multiplication. Now I'm going to find my groups. And remember, at any time you're confused, pause the video, look at it, replay it so that you'll have a better understanding. Okay. So now, again, I ask myself how many groups of 4 can go into 7? Well, I'm going to put 1 because I know that 1 times 4 equals 4 and I'm going to subtract it out. If I did 2, four ti 2 times 4 equals 8, and 8 would be too big. So 1 is uh, my largest. I can subtract out. It becomes a 3. Bring down. That becomes a 3. Now 4 times what will get me close to 33 without going over? Well, I know 4 times 5 equals 20. 4 times 6 equals 24. I'm getting closer. 4 times 7 equals 28. So I'm adding groups of 4. 4 times 8 equals 32. Uh, that's pretty close. You think if I add another group, it's, you're right, it's going to bust the bank. I can't do that one. So I'm going to put my 8 right on top of right where I'm at. So you see that? I'm going to highlight that one for you. I want you to be able to see this is where I brought this down and when I put the number it's going to be right underneath that so they kind of all line up right there okay so I want you to be able to see that so here I'm going to put my 8 is 8 times 4 equals 32 subtract that out 3 I can take 2 out of it it leaves me with 1 3 minus 3 is 0 and I'm bringing my 6 down. Okay, now I want you to take a look. See where I'm bringing down my 6? My partial quotient, or part of my answer to a division problem, is going to go right here. So do you see how this is going to be all lined up? I'm sorry about that. Let me get rid of that part. Okay. All right. Now, how many groups of 4 go into 16? Well, if I take 4 out of my 20, 4 times 4 equals 16. So it's going to be 4 groups. 4 times 4 equals 16. I can subtract that out, and it's 0. So my remainder is less than 4 or is 0. So my answer is 184. There's no remainder. Okay. So that was that first three problems. Now let's, we're going to move on to multiplication and the number, I'm going to put number 4 we have 478 times 46 now I'm telling you sometimes we using a standard algorithm can be confusing so let's do it this way I don't know, I'm sure you've been shown it before, there's so many different ways 
to break things out, but I'm going to show you one way that is really easy for me. It may be easy for you, it may not. So we'll work with and see what happens. So if I wanted to expand 46, I know that I have the 4s in the 10s place value, so the value of 10 4s would be 40. The value of 6 1s would be 6. So 40 plus 6 equals 46. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to bring this out 478 times. Now look at this. Because it's ending in a 0, and I already know anything multiplied by 0 is 0. So instead of having a line of all zeros, I'm going to simply just bring my 0 right down here. And that takes care of that. Because I'd end up adding up all zeros anyway. And to me, that's like, it can be confusing and it can also, um, it's more tedious. Now I'm ready to start. 4 times 8 equals 32. I'm going to carry my 3 to the next place value. I always put a plus sign. It reminds my brain, imprints on my brain, that I need to add the next one. 4 times 7 equals 28, plus my 3 is 29, 30, 31. Now I'm done here, and I'm going to add another 3. 4 times 4 equals 16, plus 3 is 16, 17, 18, and 19. Now I have a partial, this is called a partial product. I only have part of an answer. I don't have the whole answer. Because I have to, this I've done now. Now I need to multiply 478 times my 6. Eight times six is forty-eight. Six times seven, and I carried my four. Six times seven. I apologize for that. Six times seven is forty-two plus four is forty-six. I'm gonna cross out that so I don't get confused. Six times four is twenty-four. Plus 4 more is 28. Now there's my answer there. Now I'm going to add these two together. So I'm going to bring this one right down here. So I have my 8 and my 1s, my 6 and my 10s, my 8 and my 100s, and my 2 and my 1000s. Keep them all lined up. And that's why I had given you the grid paper, because it helps you keep things lined up. Now I have 8. 6 plus 2 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9, 9 plus 2 is 11, carry my 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and my answer is 21,988. Very good. All right, let's go to number 5. Number 5 is 673 times 84. All right, another way that you can do it, and it still can be... Maybe it's an easier step, but you were taught this back in third grade, and it's called your um, magic box or even the area model. So I'm going to make, I have three place values here, so I'm going to make three spots. So this is going to be my ones, my tens, and my hundreds. So I'm going to place my 3 here, my 7, and my 6. I'm going to draw a line, and I should have made it where it would be equal, but that's okay. Now, I need my 1s, and I need my 10s. Okay? Now I'm going to start...